Good day from ChemHelp ASAP. Our topic for this video is one of the fundamental purification methods, distillation. Distillation is a purification method that is based on differences in the boiling point between a molecule and its impurities. The key limitation is that the molecule must have some volatility. It must boil. Furthermore, from a practical standpoint, it's probably going to be a liquid, or at least a very low melting solid. The greater the difference in boiling point between two molecules, the easier the separation will be during distillation. In practice, distillation is easier to perform with larger quantities of material. A distillation setup generally looks something like this. We heat a flask with the impure material. Eventually, the contents boil and vapors rise. They find their way into the condenser where the glass is cooled through water flow. So water comes in the bottom, out the top. Through tubing, the gas condenses and then drips into a receiver flask. The vapors do flow past a thermometer on their way to the condenser. Temperature changes in the thermometer allow one to determine the current boiling point of the material that is being collected. Before demonstrating a distillation, I want to share a tragic story. A lab worker had some pure hexane and transferred it into a flask that surprisingly was not clean and contained an impurity. Recognizing that the hexane and the impurity for methyl acetophenone had very different boiling points, the lab worker decided to purify the hexane through a distillation. Let's see how this distillation worked. Okay, before we get started on the actual demonstration, let's look at a TLC plate. This TLC plate is of the impure mixture. So here is where this stuff was spotted, and that's the solvent front going up to that line. Now, if this were just pure hexane, we would see nothing on this plate. Nothing for two reasons. One, hexane is not UV active, so it wouldn't show up under UV light. Two, hexane is volatile so it would evaporate quickly off the, off the plate before we even took the light. Notice that there is something here. I have three lanes here. There's stuff in there. That is this impurity. That is the acetophenone, uh, the methyl acetophenone. So hopefully once we're done with the distillation, we will take a TLC of our purified hexane and we won't see any spots. So this is kind of the starting evidence that we have an impurity in our mixture. All right, here is all the equipment that we need on the screen. The star is this little thing. This is our short path still head. That's um, what's gonna allow us to do this distillation. We have two round bottom flasks. One will contain our material and we'll boil it, the material out of that flask and we will collect it in the smaller flask on the right. Here's our impure stuff. And then we have a nice fancy thermometer on the screen as well. We're going to heat everything up in a sand bath. So here's our heat and we have our hot plate turned on and ready to go. Here is our fully assembled apparatus. You can see we have a flask on the bottom. This is a 50 uh, milliliter flask and it has about 20 milliliters of our impure hexane uh, mixture in it. I have a stir bar. The stir bar is not really that we need to stir anything, but um, whenever you have things that are boiling, it's nice, it's nice to have something that provides agitation to make sure the bubbles don't splatter too much as they form. We have the distillation head uh, attached to the top of the flask. Notice that we've clamped at the, at the lowermost flask around that neck to provide support from the bottom. The distillation head then comes up. We have two water lines. This line is the water in. You want the water to go in the bottom of the condenser. It then fills the condenser and goes out the top. Generally, if you're going to do these, uh, set up a distillation with water cooling for a long period of time, you'll want to have clamps 
around these hose fittings because uh, water leaks in labs can actually cause a lot of damage. So as we cool the vapors that come out, they'll cool in the condenser and we will collect them into this flask. So that's the setup. We have our hot plate set to 135. That's hopefully going to be more than enough heat to boil hexane, which boils at around 70 or so degrees. So this is our setup. The next step is to lower this into the sand bath, lower our flask in, into the sand bath and begin the boiling process. So I've lowered the flask into the sand bath. I've already gotten impatient. I turned up the heat to 160 degrees Celsius. It, it does take a little bit of time for the heat from the hot plate service to transfer into the sand and therefore heat up the solvent in the bottom of that um, round bottom flask. Regardless, we're going, we have water flowing now in the bottom, out the top, and our temperature, our thermometer is set up to read the temperature of the vapors as they come across this high point in the apparatus and then condense down to the bottom. So that will read us the temperature of the boiling point of the liquid that we are collecting in the receiver. Well, at long last, we are starting to see some bubbles in here. So I'm going to move the camera and see if these will show up at all. They maybe aren't very clear on the camera, but there are little bubbles forming around the stir bar. And as the stir bar spins around, it makes sure that the bubbles diffuse evenly and don't uh, cause too much of a agitation in the mixture. So this is looking good, is doing what we expect. And uh, pretty soon we'll be able to collect a temperature point on this, uh, on this hexane as it boils. Okay, so things are boiling now and they're starting to move a little bit so let's zoom in on this and I hope this is visible it's really hard to see especially if I don't hold the camera steady so we have vapors coming up on the glassware this is hot vapor and it's hitting the cooler glassware and dripping down and as it happens the glassware gets hotter and the hotter the glassware gets the the more it gets hot and it allows the vapors to rise higher and higher up the glassware and right now the vapors are condensing right about here and dripping down so as the vapors can uh, as they condense they release heat into the glassware and the and that allows the next vapors to go just a bit higher now eventually we will get the glass warmed up all the way up to about this point. So let's take a look at our thermometer. I'm not sure if it's visible, but we're at about 20 some degrees. We're right about here, 22 or so degrees. So let's come back to our flask. Where is our vapor? Our vapor is right about to here. So we'll keep recording but I'm just going to wait and I won't say anything else until it gets a little bit closer to the thermometer. You can see if, if it keeps on rising, eventually it's going to hit this thermometer. And about when it hits the thermometer, our temperature should shoot up because now the heat's going to be going into the mercury bulb with the thermometer. And the vapors, organic vapors, are heavy, uh, more dense than air, and it will fall down into this condenser and the vapors will be collected in our receiver flask. But for right now, we're not quite there. We're getting close, but not quite there. Okay, it's getting very close now. So, if we look at our thermometer, we've risen to almost uh, let's, past 25. We're getting up on 30. And our vapors are right. They're just starting to touch the thermometer. We're going to get a drip coming off of the thermometer in just a second as we get condensation on the thermometer. Oh, it's trying to drip, drip. There's a drip that came off the thermometer. What is our temperature right now? It's uh, closer to 40 degrees, I believe. So we're starting to warm up the system. That's a good sign. There we've seen, excuse me for that, we are getting a couple drops coming down here okay great so we are distilling this material now I don't think we've really put enough heat into the thermometer to get an accurate reading but we've now risen maybe to about 50 degrees a little bit off the scale so that's 20 30 40 
50. It's actually off the camera just a spec. But this is doing what it's supposed to do. So as this gets going and goes a little faster, we should see um, we should see this temperature rise to about 70 degrees. We're just not getting a very quick rate of distillation right now because the glassware is still getting warmed up. But we are up to about 55 degrees. Well, the distillation has continued. You can see there's relatively little in the original flask now. We've boiled out quite a bit, distilled out quite a bit to over here. It is still slowly distilling, but our temperature has come down. I, I think that our ability to keep enough vapor and the rate of, um, of distillation has slowed to the point that we're not maintaining the temperature in the thermometer. So what's happened is our thermometer temperature has dropped, and we're getting towards the end of this distillation. In fact, I'm going to stop it. But this is what you'll typically see. As you distill, once you start to run out of the volatile material, your temperature will drop. Now, if we try to continue to heat this, and we heated it hot enough, we would begin boiling the impurity. And then what we'd see is, as we boil that out, the temperature would shoot up, um, shoot up to a temperature that correspond to the boiling point of our impurity. But uh, we're not going to be able to achieve that in this particular setup. So that is a distillation. And so what I'll do at the end is I'll take this material, we'll run a TLC, and we'll see what it looks like. Okay, and we have now on the screen two TLC plates. This is the TLC plate, the one on the right is the one that we showed. This is before purification. We saw this nice big spot in here, that's our impurity. And the one on the left is our product TLC. I can't tell where I spotted. It's down here somewhere. But you see, there is nothing here. So our impurity is now gone. So therefore, our distillation did successfully remove the impurity. And it removed it because the impurity had a higher boiling point, much higher than our hexane. During the demonstration, I mentioned that it is possible to draw a vacuum on the mixture to reduce the boiling point of compounds. This is important. Not all molecules boil at temperatures that are convenient for a laboratory distillation. Furthermore, if your molecule requires a temperature of 300 degrees C or higher, then it's possible that a molecule might decompose from the extreme heat before it starts to boil. This is clearly a problem. By drawing a vacuum over your material, the boiling point is reduced, less heat will be required, and the molecule may survive the distillation. Win, win, win. Here is a graph called a nomograph. A nomograph allows you to convert a known boiling point at atmospheric pressure to a boiling point at a lower pressure. Let's say we have a material with a boiling point of 400 degrees at atmospheric pressure. Not many compounds survive 400 degrees of heat. Of heat. A question might, we might have is, what level of vacuum would be required to knock the boiling point down to 200 degrees? That would be a bit more feasible. If we draw a line from 400 degrees at 760 torr, or 760 millimeters of pressure, and connect it to our desired temperature of 200 degrees, and then extend the line over to the observed pressure, we can see that the required pressure would be about one millimeter of mercury. Okay, connect the system to a decent vacuum and start distilling. Almost every synthetic lab has this image on a wall or on a hood for quick reference. I hope you enjoyed this demonstration of distillation. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe, like, or leave comments or questions. Take care.